Hey everybody, I'm Steve, one of the performance coaches at SSP, which you guys know that by now. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to improve straight ahead speed or just run faster. No legs today, so we're not even going to talk about the legs at all, we're going to focus on just arms. I know it sounds crazy, I feel like a lot of times we spend so much effort perfecting the legs and shin angles and how much force we're striking the ground with and our posture, which is all great and we need that and we forget about the arms. And the arms directly are related to the legs. They help counterbalance the legs, right? It's like how we're naturally supposed to walk, opposite arm, opposite leg. It helps counterbalance our legs, right? If we take our arms out of the mix completely, we lose balance and it's harder to go in a straight line, just simply walking, especially when we're trying to run straight ahead. So we need our arms. They're designed to work with our legs. But how many times have you seen people run with insufficient arms or zero arms? This whole kind of thing stemmed from uh, just two days ago, you know, we deal with a lot of female lacrosse players here. We train a lot of them. We had two new ones start up with us, and I'm analyzing running form, and their legs actually are pretty good, and their arms are terrible. And I'm thinking, why are their arms terrible? Well, they play lacrosse, so they do hold a stick a lot of times. That can kind of be the excuse. Doesn't matter. We still need to have good arm action, because when my arms are working the way they're designed to, it speeds my legs up. And the faster my legs go, obviously the faster I'm going to run as long as I have good posture good shin angles, good triple extension, all that kind of stuff we've talked about before. So how do we get better at using our arms? How do we get away from doing the old gorilla run where I go across my body, or the karate chop where I just chop straight down? How do we get away from that stuff? And why is that stuff bad? We talked about it. If I'm trying to run in a straight line, my arms counterbalance my legs, right? If I go across my body, it's not sending me straight ahead anymore. It's sending me side to side. But I'm trying to go straight ahead, right? So my arms need to drive straight back, not across my body. We also need to talk about the whole karate chop thing, right? This arm action is designed to originate the shoulder. We want to originate at the shoulder, but if we're starting a karate chop, we originate here. That lack of elbow drive will slow my legs down a lot because my arms pretty much are doing nothing at that point. So a lot of this can stem from real tightness through my anterior capsule. Um, I have a problem with shoulder extension. So obviously there's going to be some foam rolling, some stretching things that we can do to improve that range of motion. And a lot of times it's a motor pattern. We don't have that motor pattern or it's a poor one and we cross our body, we karate chop straight down. Also, you'll see people tense up a lot of times. That shrug or that tenseness through the face or tenseness through the hands slows the arms down, inhibits the amount of rotation I can get, and then my legs obviously slow down with it, right? And we're trying to accelerate, that's what we're talking about right now. So if I'm trying to accelerate, my legs need to move fast. If I slow my legs down, I don't move fast. It's pretty simple, all right? I'm gonna bring in Sierra. We're gonna talk about a couple ways that we can help improve how my arms work when running. So we're gonna have her get down on her knees. Let's take the legs completely out of it. I don't even wanna think about her legs right now. I wanna just focus on the arms, okay? So we're gonna do what we call arm action. It's called arm exchanges. What we're gonna do, and this is, talk about acceleration right now. So for Sierra to run from zero to 10 yards, as fast as she can, she's obviously gotta get there quick. So her arms and legs will move fast. So this is a very powerful and aggressive arm action exercise that she's gonna be doing, okay? So we're gonna talk about, we wanna originate obviously the shoulder, we just talked about that, not the elbow. So we're gonna use the cue for her cheek to cheek with her arms, remember not crossing her body. She's gonna have her right hand up by her cheek here and her left hand back there by her butt cheek. And we're gonna look for roughly about a 90 degree angle in the arms that we're gonna look at, okay? In a second, I'll have her move, you can see the side of it real quick. So remember, she wants to drive the elbow back, originate the shoulder, and it's gotta be powerful and aggressive. So when I say go, she'll just do one switch. And go, she's gonna do it again. Go, and again. Go! Now this time, I want to make sure as a coach that she's driving back with power and with force. Take my hand, put it back here. Ready? Go! We hear that. Go! Go! Awesome, right? If we hear that impact, we'll relax for a second. If we hear that smack, she's driving it back pretty quick. Let's turn her. She's going to face me now. Go and face me. Do the same thing. Right hand up here, left hand by the butt cheek. And now we can see from the side view what kind of rotation she's getting back through here. Okay? Go! Right through that shoulder. Go! Driving. Go! While she's here, she's tight through her butt, tight through her belly button, and her, uh, through her midsection, and not shrugging. Go! And she's relaxed in the face, and hands are pretty relaxed. So we'll tell them, don't straighten them out, also don't make a fist. Kind of just relax them. Maybe like you're holding a spoon or something in that hand, right? Go! Driving it back. Go! Okay, now as a progression, we'll do a double exchange. She'll do two switches, right? You ready? Go! We'll do it one more time. Go! And relax. Okay, good. So go ahead and get up to your feet. Sierra's going to go ahead and put on this sled right here. Because now we just worked on her arms, right? We worked on that drive, and she looked pretty good. She was pretty relaxed through here. Good elbow drive, wasn't crossing her body. So now let's add the legs back into it. We worked on the arms. Now let's see if she can keep that same arm action, 
while moving forward in acceleration pattern. I'm going to have her just do it into acceleration march, but we obviously could progress this to a run and see what she's doing with her arms, okay? So she's going to go ahead and give us that 45 degree angle. We've worked on this before. She's going to march about five yards forward. While she does that march, she's going to drive her elbows back. So these bands, we're using these bands, they're to keep her arm at a 90 degree angle, right? If that band was to shoot off, it lets us know that she's karate chopping and not originating at the shoulder and driving the elbow back. Go ahead and march for me, Sierra, about five yards. We see that elbow drive? It's the same thing we worked on earlier, right? Now go ahead and show us a karate chop and shoots the band off when relaxed. It's instant feedback for her, right? If that band comes off, it lets her know, whoops, I'm karate chopping, I'm not driving my elbow back, and we got a big problem with her arms. So that could be an easy way to just give some instant feedback, let her know if she's doing it right. Go ahead and pop that off for me real quick. You know, an easy way to think about this too, it's easy. We can throw this into any part of our workout. Could be part of a warm up, could be part of an acceleration session, whatever. But usually you're doing about two sets or so, maybe about eight singles, and then for doing the doubles, maybe four each side. And then obviously, she's doing a harness march, throw some bands on her, let's see if she can use her arms. Okay, so now, back down to your knees. We talked about acceleration focus. Let's talk about more of an absolute speed focus. So we're talking lo distances you know, longer than 20 yards. Let's say she's going out and she's running um, 200 meter dash, or she's just running a mile. So now her arms, we gotta address the efficiency of her arms. It's not a power focus anymore, right? Because she's not accelerating 10 yards. She's going for a longer distance. So we want her arms to be similar to what we talked about, not as much power focus, more of an efficiency focus, right? So we want her to initiate the shoulder. She's gonna go ahead and start with straight arms and big arm swings for me. Go ahead and do big arm swings. Good, now turn and face me and do that same thing again. Good, we see that shoulder rotation. She's getting big, huge arm swings. It looks awesome. Not crossing her body straight up. Now she'll bend the elbows just a little bit. Good, she's still getting that nice, good arm action. And now I'll put her at 90 degree angle. Good, and I'll have her work on that. She might speed up just a little bit. Good, just like that, but chest is tall. More of an efficiency focus. We'll have her go 30 seconds, right? Maybe two sets. Go ahead and relax for me, Sarah. Great, about two sets, about 30 seconds. And now I was working on the efficiency of those arms. And then I would say, hey, when you go run your mile later today, practice those arms. Make sure you're getting that origination at your shoulders and driving your elbows back. All right, so go ahead and practice this stuff. Arm action. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you.